Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So this video was very highly requested. A lot of you guys wanted to see the exact settings of my brushes, and I'm not exactly sure why you want to see the exact settings. I'm going to say this in the beginning of the video, but if you're new to Procreate or you're unsure how to kind of like tweak brush settings or you're new to digital art, I highly, highly, highly suggest looking up videos on how to tweak brushes or how to make your own brushes or just like taking the time to actually experiment with each brush or different brushes to see what you like. Because if you're only relying on another artist's brush settings, then when you want to learn how to change something, maybe you don't like um, the edge of like a certain brush because maybe it doesn't fit your style or it doesn't help with your workflow, then you might be stuck with this brush because you don't know how to change it. And it's just easier if you know why I changed the settings to the way I want them to be just because I do have prior experience painting and paint tool side prior to procreate and a lot of the brushes that i wanted to make in procreate were based off of my paint tool side brushes because the paint tool side brushes that i like using were the ones that i was most comfortable with so if i wanted to work digitally on something that's a little bit more portable i could do that here in procreate but for the people who do want to use the exact same brush settings not only that I'm going to say this as well, just because you use the same brushes or tools as another artist doesn't guarantee the same result um, because people's process is different, people's understandings are different, as well as like technique and skill or like just prior experience will change the way you use a specific tool. Okay, if we were given like a still life situation where everyone's painting or drawing the same thing and you're, all you're given is a piece of like printer paper and a graphite pencil everyone's still gonna have different results so that's how it's gonna be and that's just how it is and it's that's literally how it was back when i was doing my fine arts degree um when we were doing still lives a lot of people had different styles and we we're using the same material we we're just using compressed charcoal and a piece of i think white vellum that's it so after that disclaimer, let's get into the brush settings. So I did write everything down as well as the Ibis Paint ones. I'm going to be going through both of the different painting softwares, so Procreate brushes and then the ones I use in Ibis Paint. So I'm going to do a quick demo here with each brush to show you guys uh, what the brush looks like and how I use it usually. So we're going to start off in here. So in your brush library, you can make different folders. Um, usually when you import brushes from other people's packs, they will come in their own folder as well. So for me, I made a sprout folder and this has literally all the brushes that I use the most frequent. Um, the most frequent I use are literally these four right here. And well, let's just talk about the sketch brush first. I think this is the one that people had most questions about just because in previous videos, I accidentally said that this was the Narinder brush. Now, the reason why is because I actually used the Narinder for the majority of my doodles before I downloaded like Jing Sketches is brush packs. Now, I'm going to put a little thing up here saying that you guys can download the i think it's his basic 10 brushes and his basic 10 brushes actually have i think the sketch round the sharp render and i think it has a flat painting stream and you can use that flat painting stream as like the base for um the paint brush i used basically even though i think it's not the exact same one that i've used but yeah so if you don't want to pay for brushes you can just download the basic 10 brushes that he has on his Gumroad and it has all the instructions on how to download it so please do not drop in the description that you don't know how to download it if you don't know how to download Procreate brushes there's definitely tutorials on YouTube as well as the written out instructions on his Gumroad so we're gonna start with the sketch round brush so I went from I'm gonna change the size of this actually so this is the sketch round brush I think it has a heart next to it so this is what it looks like so I use this for the majority of like any of my sketching um, rough drafts anything doodles as you can see it's like you can get really nice like dark lines to thin lines as long as you're playing around with the your own pressure I guess of the pencil which is kind of really nice um, 
So the reason why I like this brush in particular is because it's the closest thing to my Paint Tool Sai um, sketch brush that I think I matched settings with, like with Onisu's um, back on DeviantArt. But these are all Jing Sketches brushes that I'm gonna be talking about today, except for one brush. So let's go through the settings so you guys can see what I changed. So the difference is that, let's see, yeah, you guys just probably follow these um, to the best of your ability. I usually turn Streamline off for most of my brushes just because I personally don't like having Streamline on. Um, it just feels a little weird, but maybe if you have a more shakier hand or you're doing longer strokes, maybe you want to have Streamline on. The other settings, you guys can just pause and look at these settings, whatever you need. Shape, so I believe I didn't change anything about the shape anything here i believe the only thing i changed for any of his brushes for this maybe it'll be either in the grain or it'll be in properties i believe most of these are all turned off Dynamics, Apple Pencil, okay so in properties usually I think shape, grain, and properties is, and stroke path is usually where I change settings. Um, so in properties I think I did change the min size maybe but you can change this to whatever fits your canvas size. I would just suggest if you work on a larger scale and you want to scale your brush to the right size you might have to increase the maximum size so you can have a larger range of your brush tip size basically. Um, but yeah that's it for this one. Next is the paintbrush. So the paintbrush is the one I changed the most as you can see even signed it and stuff just to make sure like I knew this is one that I've changed the most so spacing is at 12 I think this might be so let me think this is based off of his let's see you guys can use if you're using the free pack you can probably just use the flat square and you're just gonna have to change more settings to get to your desired brush but I believe I use flat painting stream um and change the settings for this one so that's what my paintbrush is so you can see the settings right here um i don't think i changed anything in taper i believe if there is then you guys can just change it to the appropriate settings in shape this is what's the most important i like using the medium hard brush i believe so you would have to go into edit import source library and you see that there's shape sources and grain sources. So, I can't speak. Why am I speaking with a lisp? Okay, in shape source, you're going to go down and click on medium hard. And that's what this shape is. So, if you saw on the previous brush, um, which is like that flat painting stream brush, his was more of a jagged like rectangle. And I didn't really like that shape because I wanted something that could paint a little bit more smoothly. As well as like... I don't want it to be too soft. If it's too soft, then I can't get some like harder edges, but also I want it to be a little bit softer so that if I use less pressure, um, you can have a much smoother transition between colors or if you're trying to blend. Um, so in shape, this is what it's at. I don't think I changed any of the other settings except for the shape. And then in grain, so in grain, I believe in the other brushes, this is set to rolling. Um, you can check what it looks like when it's at that stage, but because I have it to the medium hard brush and there's pretty much no texture on the medium hard brush, um, the movement, if it's a stamp or rolling, I don't think it really changes anything. And then you guys can just change it to the appropriate settings right here. Texture. Rendering, I don't think anything has changed here. Wet mix, I usually don't touch. Color dynamics, I believe nothing has changed. 
Dynamics, I don't think anything has changed. Apple Pencil, Flow might have changed, so you might want to look into that if that's different from what you have. Properties, um, so properties is something that I said before, I changed it the most, so I have maximum size to 472, which is kind of like a random number, but I just changed it to a large size so I can fill in large areas, and the min size is at zero, so I can have also just a large range from doing small detailing to really big flat areas that I can do, and then yeah, I believe that's it, so I can show you guys a quick demonstration of this. Um, so this is my painting brush. Did I just call it? I called it paint. All caps. I guess it's a clover, but I'm not going to do that. But as you can see, this is what it looks like. I'm going to size it up. Oh, another thing to add is that I changed the opacity to whatever I need it to do. So if you don't know how opacity works, definitely suggest playing around with it so you know how to, you know, potentially use it in the future. But as you can see, um, because I have the opacity set to not 100%, I can just kind of feather out this color, color pick the kind of like mixed color and kind of use that to blend everything out. I don't rely on the smudge tool. I absolutely don't like using it. I don't, I just don't like the idea of smudging really. To me, it doesn't really make sense digitally. If I want to smudge, I would do it traditionally. But if I'm doing anything that needs blend, like blending, I guess, I rely mostly on color mixing and the opacity. Um... Kind of like that. So if you pretend you kept adding a new color, you would use this. So they like kind of like feather it in. That's kind of how I use it. That's how I like to use it. So let's paint. And then last brush from Jing Sketches is pack is the sharp render. And I believe the only thing I changed here might have been streamline. We'll just go through it, I guess. So a stroke path, taper, shape, green, texture, I believe I don't change anything in here, rendering, wet mix, color dynamics, and you guys can just pause this because I'm not gonna like spend too much time just pausing in real life <laughs> for you guys to change the settings so you can just pause this and go at your own speed. Dynamics, also if you guys don't know how to use this you can you guys can also just test on the side kind of like a little scratch board to test out your brush um, and you can change it so pretend you want to do the darker one. Um, pressure, so like Apple Pencil settings. Properties, usually where I change stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't think I changed too much with this brush. I think this is the only brush I think I more or less left alone. Um, just because I like how it works. So this is the sketch round brush. No, wait, this is the sharp render. So I think for me, I use this mostly for detailing, but I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna size it up so you guys can see the texture of it. It's kind of like this um, graphite-y kind of pastel kind of look, almost a little bit hazy. As you can see, the opacity is just never at the top. I just never use the opacity pretty much at the top. Um, but I usually use the sharp render within the lower half of this um, range for size just because I like using it for um, kind of like final detailing as well as like the line line work, I guess, cleaning up my sketch basically and because I can just kind of rely on it having sharp edges for the most part. Um, I use that just to make things look a little bit cleaner. I usually don't use this one to blend as much just because that texture is very apparent. 
Um, that's why I use this one to do the majority of the shading at the beginning. And then if I ever need to, let's say, like clean something up, like I want to make this a little bit sharper, I could go like basically just sharpen it up a little bit, blend it in a little bit, and we're good to go. Um, but yeah. Okay, last brush talking about this little set of brushes that I like to use is the wet brush. So the wet one brush is actually, I think I didn't change anything except there might be streamline. Again, once again. I don't know why it's like this. Um, so yeah, maybe you guys can just check the settings. I'm pretty sure I didn't change pretty much anything of this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. If it, basically if it still has the watermark from the old or like the person who you downloaded it from, pretty much it, I think it means like you didn't change any settings, so yeah. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I just didn't change any settings, so you guys can just go ahead and download um, his wet brushes. So you have wet and let me show you guys what this looks like. So what you guys gonna have it look like is like kind of like this straight off so what you can do with this brush if you guys can see hopefully you guys can see is that you can get hard and soft edges um, I think it's easier if you use a lower opacity when doing this so if you press a little bit harder um, you can get these hard edges but if you press a lot softer you can actually um, kind of blend out your edges now the thing is that you have to do your coloring in one kind of like one pass or you're gonna get this overlapping so if you layer as you can see you can see where it kind of layers like watercolor where you kind of have the harsh edges between them but if you want to blend colors out with this you would have to softly blend out your edge like this and let's say we want to go more of a purple color and blend out this edge so that they kind of look like they're intermingling a little bit but as long as you're using it on the same pass you can feather out your edges um, but yeah if you use a light color that's not, not going to show up that's not going to show up on this so if you use a light color you keep going over it it'll just keep getting darker and darker and kind of layering like that so that's something you guys can play around with. This is what I usually like. I usually use for like my sketches where I want to add like kind of like an ink wash. I don't really use this brush at all. Um, it's a little bit too unpredictable for me, and I actually don't know how to use it properly. <laughs> um, but these are also free brushes, so you guys can download that from the description or whatever. Um, wherever you can find it. So I'll probably link all the brushes in the description anyway, so you guys can check it out. But that's about it. So to show a demonstration of where I've used these brushes in conjunction, this one's a good um, indication, a good example, I guess. A good example of where I've used the sketch round brush, which is this one, my sketch brush for the entire sketch. And then on a separate layer, as you can see, um, on this one is where I did all the washes and I did all the washes with the wet brush which I have it labeled as wet one just because it's a complete duplicate I have it set as a lower opacity and then you can do cute washes like this and it looks really nice I actually really like um, doing doodles like this and I think you guys would have saw this um, session of sketching on last week's video I think on Saturday in terms of the other three brushes, I usually use them for portraits for the most part. Um, this is kind of like the beginning stages of one of the portraits. Oh, well, this looks really blown out to you guys. He looks like a vampire. <laughs> Hopefully that works a little bit better. Okay, so kind of this is the beginning phases. So you can see that if I hide these. So this is what the sketch looks like prior to the colors and using like the multiply layer and stuff. And then this is, did I start rendering? I can't tell. Probably not. I don't, I don't think I started rendering. So I put all down, like all the colors and the base colors, shadows and stuff with the paintbrush. And then I would usually go back in and use the sketch round. 
not to sketch around the sharp i will go back and use the sharp render to do basically the cleanup to the point of whatever finish you want it to be for me it tends to be something like maybe like this this is still one of my favorites i love rendering fabric this is probably one of my favorites not like that like I think he looks good. <laughs> Just Wanu again. Okay, but I think that's it for Procreate. Uh, let's hop on to Ibis Paint really quick. Okay, so Ibis Paint or Ibis Paint X. So I haven't used this in a while, so who knows how this is gonna go. Um, yeah, I haven't touched it since that last video you guys probably saw. This is probably a little blown up for you guys. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna be talking about brushes that I've used to make something similar to this. This one's done by my hands, correct? Fingers. Using my fingers. Um, back to gallery. I don't really remember how to use Ivis paint to be honest, but something like this I guess, the one I did of June. Um, so, let's make a new one. Really don't remember how to use this. Okay, so, oh wait. I need to unlock these first. Okay, so as usual for um, Ibis Paint, you need to watch the ads so you can have access to all their brushes. I'm going to go into custom, which is I already have it set on, and as you can see in here is what the brushes that I've used. Hi guys, so basically I can't talk really loud right now because people are sleeping, but um, the first recording I did, I actually didn't do a very good job showing the settings, like all the settings, but the second recording, which is the one you're watching right now, um, the audio was very scuffed, so I'm just gonna let you guys know that the rest of this video probably won't have sound, but maybe until like the very end where I'll insert back the first um, version, but hopefully if you guys are looking to have the same settings that I was using for my brushes and Ibis paint, you can just basically follow the same settings that I'm showing here and hopefully that you guys can see all of this properly. Um, the only thing that's different is that I didn't explain the brushes nor did I really give a demo, but if you ever want to see how I use my brushes, you can just go and check the previous ibis paint videos that i've done in the past i think in the future i am going to experiment a little bit more with the ibis paint brushes um but yeah um i have nothing else to say this is this feels really awkward i'm just gonna go bye
Okay, but you, you guys should change the pressure sensitivity if you can in Ibis Paint. I'm gonna quickly go edit this video and hopefully pop it up for Wednesday so you guys can just change brush settings and stuff. I highly, 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 highly recommend that you guys experiment with brushes and see what works for you. Just because I work in a certain way doesn't mean that if you work in the same way, it's gonna garner the same results. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend you guys try to experiment with different brushes and see what works for you. Um, but yeah, I'm probably just gonna go back and work on some drawings for the meantime. But hopefully you guys enjoyed learning about the brushes a little bit. And if you ever see anybody who is demanding these brushes as usual, can you just link them this video please? I'm actually just tired of seeing those comments. And I don't understand why people demand to use the same settings as another artist, but who knows. Um, hope you guys enjoy watching this video. I'll talk to you guys next week with another video. Bye!